Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to learn how to make a very simple calculator project in Scratch. Let me first show you what a sample final solution could look like, just so you know what we're working towards. Here, I have a very simple calculator, as well as three variables, num1, num2, and operator. I'm going to go ahead and click on this green flag to start the game and see how these variables help us with our project. So once I click on the green flag, the calculator asks, what is the first number? So let's go ahead and try typing in seven. What is the second number? How about three? Lastly, which operation would you like to perform? I want to add these two numbers. So I'm going to type in the plus button. OK, so seven plus three is equal to 10. Now let's see how we can build this ourselves in Scratch. So I'm going to go over to this project over here, which is a completely blank project. And the only thing I've done so far is give it a title called Calculator. We're not going to need this Scratch cat for today, so let's go ahead and delete it. And now you can go over to Google, find a picture of any calculator that you like, and upload it to your project by coming down here, choose a sprite, and then upload sprite. So here is my calculator image. I'm just going to go ahead and center it in the middle at 0, 0 and maybe make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That looks nice. OK, so remember, what were the three variables that we saw in the solution project? They were num1, num2, and the operator. So let's go ahead and create those variables to start. To do that, I'm going to come over here down where it says variables, and I'm going to make a variable. So the first one was num1. The next one was num2. And lastly, our operator. Awesome. OK, so now we can actually start building our project up. So what was the very first thing that you had to click in order to get this program to start? That was the green flag. So let's go over to events, and we can pull over this block that says when the green flag is clicked. What this is pretty much going to do is that any code that's attached to this block, as soon as we click on the green flag, that code is going to run. OK, so what was the very first thing that the calculator asked us when we started the program? It first asked us, what is your first number? So let's go ahead and go to sensing and use this ask block to do so. Notice that next to this ask block is this answer block. I'm going to put this on the side for now, and we'll come back to it in a sec. So let's first ask. What is your first number? And I'm going to go ahead and attach this block to the when green flag is clicked block. So now let's go ahead and try clicking this green flag and see what happens. When I click on it, the calculator asks, what is your first number? I'm going to go ahead and say 7, just like I did in the example before. Notice that the game ends, the program ends, and num1 did not get updated to 7. That's because all we did was ask a question, but we didn't actually tell the computer to do anything with that answer. So that's where this answer block comes in. You'll notice that if I click on this answer block, you'll see the answer 7 that we were talking about before. So that's exactly what this block does. It stores the most recent answer to the most recent question that was asked in our program. So what we can do is we can store this answer inside of our variable num1. So let's go down to variables, and we can say set my variable. And instead of my variable, which was this dummy variable that was automatically created when we created this project, we can go ahead and set num1 to answer, just like that. So now if we try running the program again, and let's say I say the number 8, we can see the number 8 is being stored inside of num1. All right, so go ahead and try doing the same thing for num2. How do you think you can do that? Pause this video and come back when you think you have your answer. All right, so let's ask for our second number. So once again, I'm going to go over here to sensing. I'm going to ask, what is your name? And I'll pull over this answer because I know I'm going to use it in a second. And I'm going to change this prompt to, what is your second number? And now I can go to variables. And this time, set num2 equal to my answer block. Awesome. So let's try this out to make sure that it works. Make sure that you're always the you're always running your program as frequently as possible. OK, what is your first number? Let's try something different, like 4. What is your second number? Let's try 3. And there we go. Num1 is set to 4, and num2 is set to 3. OK, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the first two for our operators. So first, we're going to ask, choose an operator. Oopsies. 
choose an operator. And just to be specific, I'll go ahead and say plus, minus, multiply, or divide. Awesome. And then I'm going to set my operator variable to whatever the user answers. Okay, so one more time. Num1 is 7. Num2 is 3. And operator is plus. Boom. Okay, so now we have all the information we need. Now we need to actually do the calculation. So how can we do this? Well, depending on what operator the user gives us, we then want to perform that operation on the two numbers provided. So first we have to check and see what operator did the user get us. So we can use do this by using what we call conditional statements. This sta these conditional statements are also known as if-then statements. If we go over to control, you'll see there are two different types of if-then block. For the purposes of this project, we only need this first one. So let's go ahead and drag it and add it to the bottom here. And notice the shape of the input that is here. So whatever we put in here is going to be the condition that needs to be true in order for the code inside of it to run. So what needs to be true? For example, if our upper operator is this plus sign, then we want to add number one with number two. So we want to add seven plus three. So how can we do that? We can go over to operators and we can pull over this equal operation. And then we can get our operator variable from here and say, if our operator variable is equal to plus sign, the addition symbol, then perform the addition operation on these two numbers. So let's go back to operators and we can find the addition operation. Operation, And what two things are we adding together? Num1 and num2, the two variables that we created when we first started. So we're going to say num1 plus num2. And we can put all of this inside of a say block so that the calculator tells us what the sum of these numbers are. Okay, let's back up. I know we just did a lot. So what do, what does this block do again? We're checking to see if the operator that the user gave us is an addition operator. And if that is true, then we're gonna say the sum of num1 and num2 for two seconds. If this operator isn't true, then nothing is gonna happen. So let's see what happens when we try this. What is your first number? Let's do four. What is your second number? Six. And what is your operator? Let's say plus. And look at that, we got 10. Now, I'm gonna try this again, but this time give a different operator. Let's say 10 and then five, and let's say division. Notice that nothing happens. That's because this statement that we checked for was not true. So that was the end of our program. All right, okay, so do you think you can do the rest of the operators, the minus, the subtraction, multiplying, and division operators? Go ahead and try it out, pause this video, and come back to see if you got your answer correct. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. So let me go ahead and grab three more if statements. So one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna get three of these blocks because I got three more operators to go through. Awesome. And then I'm going to check to see if these operators are each individual operation operator. So we're gonna say is the first operator minus, the second operator multiply, third operator divide. And I can get a say block because I know I'm gonna say these three things. And then lastly, if operator is equal to minus, what do we want to happen? We want to find the, we want to find, do the problem num1 minus num2. So we can go over here to operator and we can get the subtraction block and say num1 minus num2. Oops. Okay. So do you think you know how you would go about and about doing the remaining operators? Go ahead and pause this video, try it out, and come back to see if you got the right answer. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and do the rest of this project. So I'm going to go in here and get the if then block. I'm going to put this operator inside and say if operator is equal to the minus operator, then we want to do 
say, take the minus operator and we're gonna say num1 minus num2. And just to save some time, I'll go ahead and duplicate this block two more times. And instead of minus, I'll say times. Instead of minus, I'll say divide. And then I'll go ahead and get the correct operators. So this one is going to be multiply num1 and num2. And this one is going to be divide num1 and num2. And to get rid of these extra blocks, I can just go ahead and drag them to the side over here. So let's review. If our operator is the addition operator, we're going to say num1 plus num2. If our operator is the minus operator, then we're going to subtract num1 and num2. If our operator is the multiplication operator, then we're going to multiply num1 and num2. And lastly, if we have division, we're going to divide num1 by num2. So let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. So let's try addition again, just to make sure that it's working. Let's say 10 and five and plus. There we go, 15. Now let's do minus uh, 20 and five and minus also get us 15. And then let's try multiply. Let's say three and five gets us 15 when we multiply them. And then lastly, divide, let's say 100 divided by 20. That will get us five. Awesome. So a bonus operation that you can use. If you scroll down in your operators, you might find this mod block. Have you ever heard of mod before? Essentially what mod does is it takes one number, let's say 10 and a second number, five, and it divides the second first number by the second number. So it's going to do 10 divided by 5. But rather than just giving us the, the quotient of these two numbers, instead, it's going to give us the remainder of the two numbers. So if I click on this mod block, you'll see that we get 0. But if I say 10 mod 4, we get 2, because 10 divided by 4 will get us a remainder of 2. To do mod, and the mod operator looks like the percent sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if our operator is equal to the percent sign, which again, we use for mod, then we're going to say, mod, we're going to say num1 mod num two. So let's try this again, this time with the mod block and see if it works. So let's try something we know like a hundred and five. And this time we're going to put the percent operation instead. And we'll see that it's zero because 10, a hundred divided by five does not give us any remainder. But if I say 99 and five mod operator, we get four because five can go into 99 a whole bunch of times with a remainder of four. Okay, so that is your completed calculator project. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.